Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate creating a project in SI2017. And since this video is part of the Getting Started series, um, I have no clients imported, I have no projects, and I've only downloaded uh, those three products that you may have seen in a previous video. So it'll be a quick one here, but we're going to go ahead and show that uh, you can create a client right on the fly as you're creating a project. Or of course, if you want to import your clients ahead of time, you can manage those under uh, People here. And if you want information on that, just click this Learn More link and you'll go to our online user guide. For this video, we're going to go to Projects, Manage Projects, and as I mentioned, it's completely blank right now, so we're going to just go to New, Project, and that's going to open up the new project wizard. And since I don't have any clients yet, I'm just going to go ahead and click in this box and type a name here. And when I tab out of here or click out of this box, uh, you're going to be prompted here to create the client. Uh, you have to do this. Uh, how much information you add will be up to you, but uh, this has to happen. If you hit no, it'll just clear the field. So we'll choose yes, and this is going to create a new client uh, in your uh, people list inside of SI. Now, uh, if this is a commercial job, the name here might be of the company, and th then you might go ahead and put like a, a website or set taxes or anything like that. Um, for residential jobs, you won't necessarily have to add a whole lot of information here to the client itself other than uh, the addresses and then the contacts being the most important. Um, so let's go to address and click new. And you'll see it defaults to site address. You could add a billing address or an other address. You can even rename your addresses if you'd like. The site address being the default because that's uh, the most important one as far as our software is concerned. Uh, it's going to print on all of the reports and show up in our interfaces uh, for this client. So we'll go ahead and type in an address here. And when you're done, go ahead and hit save and close. And then if you want to add a, a billing address, you certainly can, um, especially if it's different than the site address. And here's the contacts tab. And here we're going to add a brand new contact. So we'll just choose new contact. And um, oftentimes in a residential situation, you might be repeating the name here. You'll notice this says company now instead of client, like it's it on the first tab. Uh, that's OK. This is just associating with this person um, or this client. So we'll just go ahead and say. Bob Smith and repeat that. And then if you want to give uh, a title here, you can we'll say homeowner, uh, phone number, uh, mobile number, fax number, email. All of that information can be entered here. Um, for the sake of this video, I'll just go ahead and skip that for now and hit save. And then we'll save and close this new client. And that client has now been added uh, to your catalog or your uh, database, I should say, inside of SI and you can be used on uh, future projects. Uh, the next thing that you'll want to do is enter a project name. And uh, those are the, really the only two required fields. So we're just going to say Smith Home. And if you want to give it more information, like uh, automation or whatever you're doing, you certainly can. Now, if you want to fill in a project number manually, you can. Uh, otherwise, this will be auto-generated based on your settings in the software. Uh, there's a progress list here. This is another one of those settings from your control panel that you can modify at any time. This is the default list here. Uh, I'll leave it at estimating. But of course, you can go ahead and manage your uh, project progresses right here if you'd like to add to this list. And close out of that. And uh, the product price type is here as well. And if you recall from a previous video, I named my price type a retail, and that's the only one I'm using, so I don't even have a choice here. There's also a start and end date um, field or fields here. And you may not know that information at this point because you probably likely in the bidding process, so you don't have to fill those in um, right now. In fact, um, a lot of the information in this wizard, you can fill in later if you'd like. Uh, there's a couple of key steps you'll want to get to in this, and I'll uh, discuss those as we go through this. So let's go ahead and click Next. And what you're seeing here uh, is the primary contact that I um, created for this client. If you'd like to add additional contacts here from your uh, list of people, if you've already imported some contacts like electricians or builders you work with, you certainly can do that here. Um, you can pull from your existing contacts, or you could create a brand new one on this step just to add an additional contact here. Uh, next step, uh, this is showing the site address that was entered. The next step would be the billing address, and um, I didn't bother creating one of those, but a quick little tip for you, if it is the same as the site address, you can click this little change address button here. Just double click that and that will fill in the billing address for you. Go ahead and click next here. This is where you can apply a price rule to a project. Uh, price rules will dictate the, the price of products as you add them to a project. Uh, for instance, if you were doing a cost plus project, you know, cost plus a certain percentage rather than your retail uh, price for your products, you could set that on a uh, project level. But uh, oftentimes, you'll just skip this step. 
The next step is where you'll choose your taxes for the project. Uh, if they vary from your default, uh, you can use the drop downs here to select the taxes you set up, or you can even manage your taxes via this link right here. I'll go ahead and click next. Uh, here you would add project resources, and these are other people in your company involved in the project. For instance, uh, if you uh, were the sales rep, but you know you'll be working with a certain project manager or a uh, certain engineer on this project, you could add them at this point. Um, and I'm treating this more like it's an estimating uh, project, so uh, you may not know this information, just like you may not know the start and end date until you win the project. So you can certainly skip this step for now. Uh, these can always be added later. Just choose next. Um, here's where you could enter a scope of work for the project. Uh, the scope of work being a description of uh, what you're doing. And it is an optional report that you can print out with your proposal reports uh, inside of SI. So uh, it's up to you whether you write this now or if you uh, come fill this in later. Um, once the project file is created, you'll have another option for scope of work. And that will be to uh, create or load an RTF file, rich text format. So you'll actually be able to format the text if you like. Uh, so it's up to you if you create this now or later. Uh, I'm going to skip it for now and choose next. And this is one of the steps you'll definitely want to get to, um, especially if you've had a talk with a client and you have an idea of what you're going to be doing on this project. It's your list of locations, the, the physical places where you're going to be installing the equipment. And there are two options up here, uh, add and new. Uh, each one of these has a drop down that have the same thing in them, which are locations or sublocations that you'll be adding. Adding is pulling from a preset list, and uh, that's another setting under your control panel that you can create. Um, what we'll be looking at is the default list here. Uh, or you can type new ones. Again, choose whether you're doing a location or a sublocation. Um, so now I'm going to describe the locations and sublocations to you. Um, you can have up to five levels of locations out here. Um, and that would be using the sublocation option. An example for that being uh, first you enter the names of buildings, main house, guest house, pool house. Then beneath that uh, main house, you might add a sublocation for the floors. And uh, then beneath the floors, you would add a sublocation for the rooms. So let's take a look here when we add locations, which would be the first step here. Um, this is a preset list that comes with the software. So of course you can modify this and create your own. Um, I'll just go with this list and just choose uh, main house and guest house and hit add and close. And um, you'll notice here there's a move up and move down arrows. So you can put these in the order you want. Uh, and this will dictate how they're going to print on reports that you group by location. So uh, the order here would matter if you don't want the guest house to be the first thing in the list. You'd go ahead and uh, move that down below the main house. And now when you have, say, the main house selected here, you can go back to add and choose to add sublocations to this. And this is where if you want to go to uh, the floor level, you certainly could. I'm going to go ahead and skip over that and just go straight to a room list here. And I'm just going to check a few of these for this example. Again, this won't be a complete project, but I'll just add a few of those so you can see that these are sublocations now, these, these rooms of the main house. And of course, if you want to move these around, you can put that where you want it to be and the library above the kitchen, your choice. Then you could choose the guest house and do the same exact thing. Add some sublocations. And in this case, we'll just say that um, there's a media room. We'll hit add and close. And um, that's how you build a location list out here. Um, generally, the ultimate location on most projects would be the, the room. You're identifying where you're installing the equipment. And that's great for presentation purposes as well as staying organized when you're building a project. I'll go ahead and choose next here. And next you're going to add systems to the project. This is completely optional, but um, systems would be the systems or disciplines that you do. Uh, for instance, you may be doing on a particular project um, AV. Uh, you may have a separate system for a dedicated home theater. Uh, you may be doing digital signage. You may be doing uh, control lighting, um, CCTV. Those are all different disciplines within the project. So um, the point here being, again, is presentation and organization. Um, when you are presenting or adding products to a project, you pick the location they're going and then what system it's a part of. Uh, great for filtering and sorting. Again, the add will have the default list here that you can modify under the control panel. New would be if you want to type one in from scratch. If you click add, it'll just see that we have a very uh, simple list out there. I'll choose uh, you know, AV system and we'll choose a uh, security system and choose next, or sorry, add and close. And I've added those systems here. Um, so if it's just one system in a project, if you just consider it to be an AV project or if it's just a lighting project, uh, there's no need to identify here. This is only if you want to be able to differentiate your equipment. The next step, 
here would be to uh, modify the contract percentages. And um, these contract payments or percentages, um, it's something you absolutely can set up under the control panel. And here you can even um, select a different contract payment if you've set up multiple um, defaults out there where this might be for a residential job and you might have a different one for a commercial uh, project. Um, if you want to just modify the one that's right here, you've got to add and uh, delete buttons here for adding lines. Uh, you can always just pick one of these and delete it. Um, if you're doing a uh, percentage-based billing, you'll just want to make sure that this column equals 100% before moving on. Uh, you won't be able to move on until it does. Um, I'll leave the default uh, contract percentages here for now. Choose Next. And here are any custom fields that you may have identified for projects. Um, you might not even get uh, around to identifying these at this point when you're first starting. You can always come back and uh, manage your custom fields later if you find that there's a field missing from the previous steps that you'd like to add to a project. Um, so when you're done, go ahead and click Save. And this is going to save the project file and it's going to open uh, the project editor immediately. And you'll then be able to begin working on this project. And here is the project editor. In this video, I'm not going to add any products. That will be the next uh, video in this series. But what I do want to talk about well, here is, are the fields that were in that wizard. If you ever need to access those again, uh, some of them will be up here under the information. So if you click this, this will open. And you can see here we've got some the general tab, contacts, addresses, resources, and custom fields. Uh, but there's stuff not here, like the scope of work. Uh, that's right up here on its own button here, scope of work. Um, there's also, there was locations and systems. Those are listed over here in the drop zone area, and you can manage those directly via these manage buttons. That's your locations. Here's your systems. Um, you can also see all of the settings here under the settings tab. Uh, locations and systems are here. Here's where you could change the tax if you change your mind or your contract payments. All stuff that was part of that wizard, uh, you can access here within the project file. And um, that is how you go about creating a project uh, in SI 2017, and in our next video, we'll start adding some products uh, to these locations.